Hello, I'm Mr. Bob, and welcome to my Algebra 1 video series. This video covers Chapter 4, Section 6, titled Probability of Compound Events. By the end of this video, you will have reviewed the skills necessary to find the probability of independent and dependent events. You will look at the probability of independent events and events with replacement. Next, you'll look at dependent events. These are events occurring without replacement. Finally, you'll look at a real-world problem. If you'd like me to cover any of these topics in greater detail, please leave your request in the comment section below. Please subscribe to this channel if you find this video to be helpful. I would really, I really appreciate it. I, I really would. Thank you. Okay, before we get started, I'd like to go over a couple definitions. First, an independent event or independent events. What are they? Independent events are events that do not influence one another. So you can do something to create a, a, a test event and you create another event and the two do not interfere with each other. You get independent results. A dependent events are depends that are ev events that influence each other like if i do something to cause an event and the fact that i did that something now changes the way the next event's going to happen that is called a dependent event okay the occurrence of one event affects the probability of a second event okay objective one finding the probability of independent events so it says suppose you drew or draw cards at random from the following collection. So we're going to say that these these are cards, or I'll just draw like a little, you know, like a playing card, right? Each one of these is its own little card. And you've got them in a hat or wherever, you know, and you're going to pick them out. So every card you pick out is going to have some kind of a number, on a letter on it, right? And I'm going to erase that square right now. Okay, it's going to have a, some kind of a letter on it. So it says, <coughs> you're going to, <coughs> oh, excuse me. You're going to draw at random from this list. Okay, so what are the cards? There's two R's, an A, three N's, a D, an O, and two M's. So in number one, it says you draw an R card and replace it. So that card was pulled and put away. It has nothing to do with anything else we're going to do. You put it back, so it's like you never pulled it out. What is the probability that the next card you draw will be an R card? Well, you have to decide, well, we want to draw an R card. What are the chances that we can draw one? Well, there are, we counted before, I think, or did we not? Maybe not. Let's count them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten cards. And we want to draw an R card. What's the probability? Well, the probability is we have two R cards. So we could get either one of these R cards. Either one. And that's out of 10. So we have two chances in 10. Okay, so that's going to be 2 tenths, which is equal to 1 fifth. So 1 fifth, if you, if you did that experiment five times, in theory, one of them should come up on our card. That's kind of what that says to us. So then it says, what's the probability that the next card you draw Oh, I'm sorry. That was I already read that. That's the answer to this one. Now it says you draw an R. Now we're going to start from scratch, because okay. So it says you draw an R card, and do not replace it. Okay. So now you have an R card in your hand. Draw another card. What's the probability that that card is an R card? So you started off with two. So the first one we know was one fifth. To get the first R card, let's say it was this card right here. It doesn't have to be a specific one. It could be either. They're equal cards. I'm just drawing it to make a point. So now what's left is one other card. So now I said, what's the probability of getting that card? Well, now there are no longer 10 cards. There are nine cards. So And there's only one R card left. So the probability of getting that one R card is one out of nine chances. One in nine chances of getting that second R card. So now you've got two R cards in your hand. If you pull, you, you drew out a second card, let's assume it was or wasn't the R card. Um, well, let's assume it was the R card. Okay, so then continuing on from step two above here, draw another card. What's the probability of it being an M card? Well, how many M cards are there? There are two M cards, one here and one here. 
and we've already taken out two cards. We've removed two cards. So now how many are there? There are eight cards and we're taking out the chance. What are the chances of getting one of the M's? Well, the chances there are going to be two in eight or, or one fourth. So with that picture of all those cards minus the two R cards, one in four times, you should at least be able to get one of the M's. It's ideal conditions. Of course, that never happens other than coincidentally in life. If you did it a thousand times, maybe you'd start seeing that probability. So continuing from step three, now we've got three cards that we've drawn out. Draw yet another card. What is the probability that it is the O card? Well, there's one O card. Here it is. What's the chances that we'll get that? Well, we know that we've Remove two R's and we remove, we've got one of the M's now, let's say. So we're going for an O card. So how many cards are there? There are seven. So now we're down to one seventh. Okay. Now let's look at the rule here. Probability of two independent events. If A and B are independent events, so drawing a card is an A or a B, right? That's try not the letter A or B. It's the event. We're going to call it event A, event B, event C, event D, whatever, because you have to name these so you can keep track of what event is which. So suppose we have A and B are independent events. The probability of A and B, so the probability of drawing an A and then drawing the B, that's kind of like this number two. First we drew an R and then we drew another R, okay? Probability of drawing A and B are the probability of getting A times the probability of getting B. Probability of A, probability of B. And so in our case, we said the probability of getting the R is one-fifth, the first R, and one-ninth, the second R, right? So if we're multiplying them together, what would we have? We'd have one-fifth one times one-ninth. And that would be equal to 1 45th. 1 in 45 chances of you to get of drawing that. Okay? Good. Okay, example one. It's one of these independent events. So we know that independent events are events that do not influence each other. You take them separately. The occurrence of one event has no effect upon on the probability of the second event. Suppose you roll a red number cube. So you just have a, a cube, a number cube, and it's red. And you have a blue cube. So you have a red and a blue cube. What is the probability that you will roll a 3 on the red cube and an even number on the blue cube? Okay, so let's look at the probability. What P, the P of, this parentheses, the P of a red 3 Rolling a 3 on the red cube, the probability P of a red 3 is equal to 1 in 6, because there's 6 sides on the number cube, and there's only 1, 1, right? So it's 1 sixth. On the blue cube, however, there are 3 even numbers. It's still 6 sides. So the probability of blue being even is 3 sixths or 1 half. There are 3 even numbers out of the 6 numbers. So what's together, what's the probability of this? The probability, the P of red 3 and blue even, red 3 and blue even, is equal to the P red 3 times the probability of blue being even. The probability of, probability of the red being 3 and the blue being even. And that's, we know it's 1 sixth for the red 3, and it's 1 half for the blue even number. You multiply them together and you get 1 12th. 1 times 1 is 1, 6 times 2 is 12. And you can always reduce the fractions if it's possible. Simplifying, you get 1 12th. So the probability you will roll a red 3, a 3 on the red number cube, and an even number on the blue number cube is 1 12th. So what does that mean? So what's here it said here is that you have a probability of one in twelve chances or eight percent, but it means that you have to, you theoretically, mathematically, you're going to roll that 
12 times and if you roll it 12 times one of those times you should get that that those uh, numbers the three the red three and the blue even number okay 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 example one check and so you know solve the this one suppose you roll a red and blue number cube just like the previous slide what is the probability of rolling a five on the red cube and a one or a two on the blue cube so i'll watch you pause the video and give it a try you can certainly scroll back on the in the little video here and see what we did in the previous slide but go ahead give it a try and when you come back we'll work it together i'll wait a few seconds here okay i'm assuming you've done that so here we go um I'll read it. Suppose you roll a red and a blue number cube. What is the probability of rolling a five on the red cube and a one or a two on the blue cube? Well, on the red cube, the probability right here of probability of a red five is one sixth, just like we did before, right? On the red three, one sixth. How about blue, the probability of a blue one or a blue two? So that's two out of six. And there's still six sides on a blue on the blue die so here it is two sixths so the probability of a blue one or two is two six or one third so what do we do it says to multiply them so the probability of a red five and a blue one or two is equal to one sixth times one third right one third two sixths is one third and if you multiply them, you get 1 over 1 times 6 times 3 is 18. So that is 1 out of 18 chances or 1 18th probability. Okay. Okay, example 2, selecting with replacement. So what is it, again, what does that mean? It means that you, you select, like in this case, a tile. You're going to see these little tiles with like letters on it. And you put it back and then select again. Okay. So that's what with replacement means. <clears throat> In a word game, you choose a tile from a bag containing the letter tiles shown at the right. You replace the first tile into the bag and then choose again. What is the probability that you will choose an A and then choose an E? Well, so we have to look at the bag. You have to see the important thing here is we have to know how many letters there are. Or how many tiles there are and then you have to say well they want a's and e's so we need to see how many a's i see one two three a's as i look at it one two three oh no four a's i see and then for e's i see one two three three e's and how many tiles all together one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen tiles so we're going to pick out the first tile we're going to figure out see what that is and then we're going to stick it back in the bag and drag out another tile of which we could pull the same tile again or not but let's go see what it is so we start off what is the probability of pulling an a on the first draw okay so we know that there are four a's in the bag and there are 15 tiles total so the probability of pulling an a is four out of 15 tries so you if you Four times is what it should take to be able to pull that out. Four, I mean, four fifteenths, rather, okay? Four fifteenths, whatever that comes out in mathematically if we did the division. Okay, so, and then we're going to put that back in. So now we're going to say, what is the probability of getting an E? Well, that's three fifteenths, three out of 15. So if you draw 15 times, you're going to, three times should be an E. Okay, that's what that's telling you. So then now we get down to the actual equation. It says, what is the probability of an A and then an E? Probability of A and E with replacement. Probability of A times probability of E is what that amounts to. And what is that multiplication? It's 4 fifteenths times 3 fifteenths. Or 3 fifteenths could be 1 fifth. Make it easier multiplication. So if we did the... 1 fifth and the 4 15 should have 4, right? You have a 4 over 15 times 5 is 75, right? 
And there it is right there, 4 fifteenths times 1 fifth is 4 70 fifths. The probability that you will draw an A and then an E is 4 70 fifths. And if you think about it, that means if you pull 75 times out, put it back, pull it out, put it in, put it out, put it in, put it out. Four of those 75 times, you'll get an A and then an E. Okay? Okay, example two, check your understanding. This is where we have fun, right? So you're going to go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. It's basically the same problem that we just did. Different numbers, but the same problem. Uh, I've got the bag of tiles on the right still. I, uh, we have that there for you. And go ahead and work it. When you come back, we'll do it together. Okay? Okay, I'm assuming now that you've paused the video, worked it out, and you've come back. So let's see, what is it? What's the answer here? Well, we know from the last slide that it was 15 tiles. We know where there's 15 tiles in there. And it says, find the probability of picking a U and then an I. Okay, well, an I, the probability of picking an I is 2 fifteenths. If we look in the bag, there are two I's. One here. And I'm going to change colors. Uh, how about this? There's an I right here and an I right there. There are two I's. So that means that we have 2 fifteenths. Let me change colors again. 2 fifteenths. That's 2 out of 15. There are two U's. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing you first. I just said I. And let's just flip, let's flip that. The eyes are down here, two eyes, two fifteenths. There are two eyes. And again, sorry for my confusion there. There are two U's. Here's a U here and a U up here, and there are no more U's. So it's two eyes, two U's. Same difference, they're both two fifteenths. And in order to find out what that probability is of you pulling a U, and then picking an I after replacing the U back into the bag, it's 2 fifteenths times 2 fifteenths right here. The probability of a U and then an I is P, the probability of U times the probability of I, which is 2 fifteenths times 2 fifteenths. And if you multiply that out, it's 4 2 25ths. 4 2 25ths is your answer. The probability that you will choose a U and then an I is 4 25ths. In that bag, you would pull do this experiment 225 times, and in that experiment, you should get four positive results, so to speak. I, an I, a U, and then an I. Okay? Objective two, finding the probability of dependent events. Dependent events are events that influence each other. The occurrence of one event affects the probability of the second event. When you select a tile from the bag of 15 tiles and do not replace it, there are only 14 tiles remaining when you make your second selection. And these events are dependent because the answer you're going to get for the second event is has changed than it did in our first go around, right? Well, we had we replaced it. We always had 15 tiles, so now the probability is changing. One is something per 15. The next one is per 14. So the probability of two dependent events, if A and B are dependent events, so we talked about you pull a tile and then pull another tile and do not replace. Okay. So now you have the probability of an A then a B is the probability of A times the probability of B after pulling the A. Okay. Okay, let's let's give this one a try now. Example three, selecting without replacement. Suppose you choose a tile from the letter tile shown in example two. And I put the picture of it right here so it's the same set of tiles. Without replacing the tiles, you select a second tile. So you pull one out, and then you pull another one out. You don't put the one back in. What is the probability that you will choose an A and then an E? Well, let's take a look at what is the probability. Well, what's the probability of an A tile? That's on your first draw, because they say A, then E. So the probability of an A is 4 fifteenths. There are four A's, and there are 15 tiles. 
want let me change colors to a nice dark here's an a here's an a right here are two more a's right here four a's and there's total 15 tiles then you go and you want to get your probability of the e well you've already taken an a out so there are now 14 tiles so in that case how many e's are there oh there's one e here an e down here and an e over here I don't see any more, right? And we know the answer right here is three fourteenths, right? Because there are three E's that we can pick from, and there are not only 14 tiles of the total amount. We can pick three E's, they're still remaining in the bag, and there are now only 14 tiles. So that makes three fourteenths. So what is the probability of an A and then an E? So the probability of A times the probability E after the A. <clears throat> so the probability of the A is 4 fifteenths. We know that. Here it is, 4 fifteenths right there. Then the probability of the E after the A is 3 A's over 14 tiles. Okay. <clears throat> so now we take that, multiply it out. We get, we get this multiplied, we get 12 2 tenths. And when you take that and reduce the fraction, you end up with 2 35ths. Okay. The probability that you will select an A and then an E is 2 35ths. And again, what does that mean? It means you run this experiment 35 times. Put all the tiles in, back in the bag and tr run this experiment. Figure out your results. Run it again, run it again, run it again. And after 35 attempts, Two of them, statistically, two of them will come up. If you ran this 35,000 times, you would get very close to two out of 35. Very close to 2,000 events out of the 35,000 events, right? Okay. Okay, determine the probability here. Find the probability that you will choose a U and then an O without replacing the first tile. It's the same set of tiles we've been using. This is example three. Check your understanding. So I'm going to ask you to do it on your own. And when you come back, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at it, okay? Okay, good enough. I'll wait for you. Okay, so now that you've come back and started the video back up, let's take a look at this. Find the probability that you will choose a U and then an O without replacing the first tile. So what is the probability of finding the U? That's right off the bat. It says how many U's are there is what you need to know. And when we look at it and we count it, let's see, we have, I'll pick up my blue color again, this one. I have a U right here and a U right here. And of course we know that's correct because I already did the mathematics over here and it is two out of how many tiles? It's out of 15 tiles, right? So there's two out of 15 right there. So now, what's the probability of pulling out the O? And that is without replacing, right? So that means we started with 15 tiles right here, and now there are 14 tiles. Well, the question then is how many O's are there? Well, we think if I take a look here and count them up, I have an O here, one, two, three. There are four O's. So here it is, four O's right there. I'll change colors. So we have four fourteenths. So that's the probability of the O. So the probability of picking a U and then an O, the probability of picking a U and then an O is the probability of U times the probability of the O, getting the O. And that's two fifteenths, which is the probability of getting the U. And it's four fourteenths, which is the probability of getting the O. Okay, so we're gonna multiply these together. We're gonna get eight, two tenths, 200 tenths, right? Because two times four is eight, 15 times 14 is <clears throat> 210. I think of it this way, 15 times 15, which is good to know your squares is 225. And we have to take one 15 away. So one, a 15 away from 225 is 210 right there. <clears throat> Eight 210ths 
And if you reduce the fraction, we can pull an, a 2 out of here, and we get 4 105, right? 4 out of 105 tries. There you are. Okay, now let's look at example 4. It's a real world problem. Suppose a teacher must select two high school students to represent their school at a conference. The teacher randomly picks names from a hat that contains the names of three freshmen, two sophomores, four juniors, and four seniors. What is the probability that a sophomore and then a freshman are chosen? So, what is the probability of a sophomore being chosen? Well, we know, if we count these up, and you have to count them to begin with here, that there are 13 names. Three freshmen, two sophomores is five, and then plus eight, which is four juniors and four seniors, plus eight is 13. So now we know that there are 13 names to start with. It wants to know what's the probability of a sophomore. Well, there are two. If you look right here, it says there are two, two sophomores. So the probability there is two thirteenths. Two out of 13 chances of pulling a sophomore. And then we get down to the freshman. <clears throat> no, we want a freshman after the sophomore. Well, in that case, we know there that it's three twelfths because we've removed one name already, one of the names of a sophomore. So now there are only 12 tiles remaining, but there are three freshmen. So now it's three twelfths are the odds of pulling a freshman's name out of the hat. So now we have that. So what is the probability? The probability of a sophomore and then a freshman. So it's the probability of a sophomore, which is this one up here, and then the probability of a freshman after the sophomore, which is this one right here. So that is 2 thirteenths plus 3 twelfths. Okay? 2 thirteenths plus 3 twelfths by, through substitution. And then simplification, we get uh, 6 Okay, oh, excuse me, 1 20, 26th, 1 divided by 26. <clears throat> okay, so there's that's the answer there. It says the probability that a teacher chooses a sophomore and then a freshman is 1 in 26. So there's the odds for that one. Okay, example four, check your understanding. This is find the probabilities from the names of three freshmen, two sophomores, four juniors, four seniors, just like we had in the previous slide. What is the probability that the teacher chooses a sophomore and then a junior? That's problem A. The next one is what's the probability that the teacher chooses a junior and then a sophomore? Okay, so that's just kind of backwards, isn't it? Is it the same? We'll see. And then the last question says, does the probability of choosing without replacement change the order of the events if it, it change if the order of events is reserved, reversed okay so i'll go ahead and you should excuse me go ahead and pause the video and give this a try and when you come back uh, we'll work them together okay i'll wait for you okay directions find the probability from names of three freshmen, two sophomores, four juniors, and four seniors. Okay, we, we've done this before. What is the probability that the teacher chooses a sophomore and then a junior? Well, it's how many sophomores are there and then how many students? Well, we know that it is 13 students. Four, four, two is 10, and three is 13. And we want to know what is the probability of sophomores out of the 13 names? There's two sophomores. Two? So that's two thirteenths. That's pr pretty straightforward. How about the juniors? Well, there are four juniors, and now there's one name been removed, the sophomore's name, and now we're going to have four twelfths because there's four juniors and 12 students remaining. And four twelfths ends up being what? Ends up being one third if we reduce it. So the probability of a sophomore and then a junior, two thirteenths times four twelfths or one third. If we do it times one third, we get two. Two times one is two. Thirteen times three is thirty-nine. Two thirty-ninths. Let's look at the other problem. B. What is the probability that the teacher chooses a junior and then a sophomore? Kind of just flipping it around backwards. 
So now we have four juniors, 13 names. And then after that, the probability of the sophomores, two sophomores with only 12 names, names remaining. Okay. So when we do that, we're going to get one sixth. If we want to do that, one sixth for the sophomores, because we can reduce that. So the probability of a sophomore and then a junior. No, excuse me. The probability of a junior and then a sophomore is four thirteenths times one sixth, or two twelfths, or one sixth, and that equals two thirty ninths. The exact same number. Okay. Does the probability of choosing without replacement change the order and change the order of events is reversed? So, does the probability of choosing without replacement change if the order of events is reversed? And the answer is no. It's because basically the commutative property of multiplication, the order in which you multiply the terms, has no result, no no effect on the results.